So the end of World War II brought rise to a wave of servicemen entering the workforce. Uh, those men, they, they got married. They started new families. And um, life began to kind of take shape, if you will. They, they built brand new homes in the suburbs. Industries expanded. The economy just began to boom. Um, I, I, when I think about the American dream, I think that it really began to to. to take shape in the fabulous 50s. And the cars were cool. The music was even cooler. Would you agree? Can I get a witness in the house this morning? It was a great time. I wasn't there, but it looked cool. You know, I, I, think about, uh, I think about the fabulous 50s. I think about the American dream. I think about the message that culture was trying to tell society And I think if you could wrap that message up into one line, it would be life could be a dream, right? But what culture failed to mention is that one day that really cool car would need a paint job. One day that car might need a motor replaced, right? One day that music might get a little old, right? Nah, 50s music never gets old. Okay, so scratch that. But right, uh, eventually that, that house, that dream home yeah. that you built, eventually that house is going to need to be remodeled, right? So what's the lesson here? The lesson is that yes, life can be a dream. It is achievable, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's going to take work, yes. especially in regards to marriage. That's right. I, I remember years ago, I was standing in the, the kitchen of my pastors and I'd become very close to their family. And uh, once I realized that Sister Skiles was, um, that's what we called her, was, was a tremendous cook. I was at their house every night. <laughs> She's a tremendous cook. And I remember one night, I just remember hearing pastor just casually mention, man, marriage, marriage takes work. And I remember being uh, just young and, and, and dumb and now I'm just older. Um, <laughs> And I thought, that really hit me. I really thought, you know, I never really thought of it that way. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, single, probably about 20 years old, and I'm thinking, it takes work. What? Like, <laughs> nobody, nobody ever told me that it was going to take work. If it was going to take work, I don't know. I might, might have some second thoughts about it, right? I never thought as a young man, it really never occurred to me that marriage would take work. I just thought you get married and you just live Happily ever after. That's just what happens, right? Wrong. (laughs) Boy, was I wrong. (laughs) Wrong. (laughs) Marriage takes work. So for the next few weeks, uh, we want to talk about marriage, right? The title of this series is Life Could Be a Dream. Building a Marriage where the dream never dies. Now, a word to the congregation. I don't want you to check out, if you think just even for a second, oh great, here we go, a marriage series. This is totally not for me. I wanna just give a word of advice to some of you that might be in some different circumstances. If you're young, if you're a, a child in the room or maybe a teenager or a young adult or a single person of any age thinking that one day you might want to get married, there is no better series for you to be in than this one right here, right now. You of all people, you're in the best position possible. Let me, let me ask, ask you this way. If you were to have the home of your dreams... Would you rather move into a home that's already been built or would you rather start from scratch and build your dream home down to the last detail exactly the way you want it? When you are single and you're not yet married, this is perfect timing. You get the blueprints, man. You get to lean in and hear great messages and series like the ones we're gonna bring you right now over these next three, four weeks. And you get to hear what it takes to build a dream marriage. You are in perfect positioning. So if, if, if that's you, I want you to lean in. I want you to take notes. I want you to pay attention. If you're already married, okay, <laughs> you're thinking to yourself, 
No, we've been married. We've been married 20 years. We've been married 30 years. We've been married 40 years. It's too late. The damage has already been done. There's nothing that you can do. We are beyond repair. Not true. I'm telling you right now, some of the coolest houses I've ever stepped foot in are old homes that have been refurbished and completely remodeled and modernized and made new again. Can I get a witness? I'm telling you some of the coolest homes ever. And I'm telling you, no matter what your situation looks like right now in your marriage, if you're watching online or if you're in the room today, I am telling you right now, as long as God is in it and you make room for him, there's hope for your marriage. I'm telling you right now, God can do it if you'll just begin to allow him to do that in your life. If you have been divorced and you're carrying around a lot of weight, a lot of baggage, maybe you just feel a lot of regret, you, you, you're just kind of gun shy on the whole marriage thing, I get it, okay? Or maybe you're a widow, what, whatever the case may be. You might even be saying, I don't have intentions of ever getting married, that's okay. I'm just saying, whoever you are, lean in. You need this because if you're not in a life group, you should be because we all need each other. Somebody needs you in that group to lean in and to encourage, to pray for somebody, to give advice, to rub shoulders. That's what the body of Christ is. That's what we do. So there's going to be moments in your life when maybe God puts a younger person in your path or whoever it is, and they're going to need you to give them some advice, some biblical wisdom, some counsel. The series is going to do that for you. So this is going to reach all of us, all right? So don't, don't tune out. Don't, don't check out. Don't go on vacation. Let's get a vision for God's dream for what marriage should really look like, a dream that will never die. Today is part one. We're calling it The Dream Begins With You. So when you think about building your dream life, you simultaneously think about finding that perfect person, that person the world would call your soulmate to build the dream with. And I want you to think for just a moment, why is that? Why is that as you begin to get a little older and you see the, the house in your mind and the white picket fence and the kids running around that are just perfectly dressed and always respectful and, you know, it's just you have this beautiful picture in your mind of what it's going to look like. You expect to be doing it with this other person that it's like in your mind is going to be the perfect fit for you. Well, let me tell you why. We're going to go back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. It says, now the Lord God said, it is not good or beneficial for man to be alone. You got to realize right now creation is, has just happened. God has created the world. He's created the animals. He's created Adam. And Adam is at work. Adam is out naming all of the animals that God has created. And God is taking notice that, you know what? He needs somebody, a companion, somebody, a helper, someone to come along with him and be a helpmate. He goes on to say, I will make a helper. Listen, what is a helper? One who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary. Listen, marriage was God's idea. If we're going to live the dream, the one that we have dreamed up in our mind that involves getting married and having this beautiful family, we have to do it God's way because marriage was God's idea. It was his dream first. Notice his dream was between a man and a woman. That is the definition of marriage. And so we have to look at it and say, okay, God, what do you have to say about marriage? But you know, as we think about living the dream life and we think about finding the right person, I want you to realize today as we start down this path that it's not so much about finding the right person as it is about you becoming the right person. Okay, it's let's stop really right there. It's really good. That okay, should have been guys, like 25. Like, that's good. That is good. so huge. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that'll change your entire marriage. If you will take what she just said, y'all better be writing this stuff down. I know. It will absolutely change your relationship. Say it again. Listen, you may already be married and you're like, well, it's over. No, it's not. Listen, Brad and I have been married for almost 23 years. We've counseled more couples than I want to count. And I'll be honest, we're not even good at it. So like you probably want to go see a real counselor. But 
When people come in and talk to us, here's why they don't even like us doing it. Because they come into us and they want to tell us what's wrong with their spouse. With the other person. Because here's what we do. We spend so much time thinking about the dream and the wedding and all the money we spend for that big day, that two hours of time. We spend so much time and effort planning and preparing for the wedding that we fail to plan and prepare ourselves to be the right person to get married on that day. You see, what we do is we get married and we come into it with unmet expectations. And we come into it thinking that this other person is going to somehow complete me and somehow is going to fulfill all the longings I've ever had in my life. And let me just tell you, if that's the kind of relationship you're looking for, you're looking for the wrong thing. You know why? Because if I'm going to build my dream home, I'm going to start with a strong foundation. I'm not going to build a big, beautiful home on a shaky foundation. And if you are looking for someone to complete you, or you're looking for somebody to fill the void of loneliness, or make you complete and whole, you are getting ready to build on a very shaky foundation. All right, all right, all right. right. Here we go. Um... Teenagers. (laughs) Teenagers. <laughs> if you're a guy and a girl says to you, I, j- I just, I just can't live without you. I just, you just, you just complete me. You just, I, I just can't imagine living. No, let's flip flop it. Girls, if a guy says to you, you just, baby, you just, if he talks like that, dump him anyway. But <laughs> baby, baby, uh, <laughs> I mean, you just mean the world to me, and you just, you, just, you just make me a whole man. You just complete me, and just being with you, you just make me a better person. Run as fast as you can, as far as you possibly can. Because here, here's the reality, okay? In, in mathematics, this works. 50% of a person, a, a 50% person who's developed in their faith only halfway gets together with somebody that's only halfway developed. It doesn't make a whole 100% fully developed person. In mathematics, it works. Half a cup and half a cup makes a whole cup. That works. But not in relationships. Not in marriage. Nobody is going to complete you. There, there is nobody that you're going to date. And if they're saying things like this, you need to see the big warning signs and you need to get out of the relationship fast. Don't do it. They can't complete right. you. Only God can fill that in your life. Listen, Adam was a whole man. He was his own man. God had given him authority, man. He was ready to roll. And, and, and guess what? She was added. Right. She was brought into it the picture benefit. because God knew he needed her, but he, but he right. was, he was his own man. So you need to be right. your own person, full of faith, right. full of the Holy spirit, fully developed right. in your faith, ready to go. It's you and right. Jesus. That's all you need. And, right. and, and then, and then when the moment's right, yeah. God will bring that person into your life. Yeah. So God didn't bring Eve into Adam's life because he needed someone to complete him. God brought Eve to compliment Adam. And that's where we get it wrong today. And so you may be thinking to yourself, well, shoot, I'm already married. Like we've done blown it. Like there's no hope for us. No, 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 no. There is hope in every single situation. There is hope because there is Jesus. Okay. So what you've got to realize today is that we got to go back and do some foundation work. As I told you, when Brad and I have talked to couples, here's where we always start. They want to come in with like their laundry list of all the things that they need to change about the other person. And listen, if I pause right now and gave you two minutes to write down the top 10 things you want to change about your spouse, if you're married, all of you'd be like, give me a pen. Like I can go. Like I got it. Some of y'all be saying, I need a second piece of paper. Right? (laughs) But the fact is that's not where we start. If you want to see your marriage remodeled, you really want to live the dream. God wants you to. It was his dream for That's you. That's his vision. But listen to me. It starts with you. It starts with me. 
And this is not just something that we are sharing with you that we've never lived. Over the course of the next few weeks, we'll be very real. We'll be very transparent. We will not sugarcoat anything in this series, all right? I'll just tell you, parents, this might be a good time to check out Kids Church. Or you can have a lot of good conversations with your children at home. Either way, Don't get I'm upset cool with, with us it. if we say something you don't want them to hear. That's, That's right. on you. Don't bring them in the room. <laughs> the fact is... Foundation work starts with you and I. When Brad and I took this, this property and we began to build a church, the very first thing that had to happen to the old farmhouse, we were going to step in there and we were going to remodel it and we were going to start a church. But the first thing that had to happen was there had to be foundation work done. The house had to be jacked up. New beams had to go in. Why? Because we could not build anything on top of that. And so today, I want you to begin to look inward. This is not like today, we're not going to elbow our spouse. We're not even going to like, you know, make eye contact with them. This is about you. This is about me as an individual. Now, I want you to go this morning, if you have your word, go to the book of Ephesians. This is where we're going to land today. So in the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul begins to lay out how to live this dream. In chapters five and six, you're gonna see that Paul lays out the roles of a husband and a wife and then children in Ephesians chapter six. But here's what's interesting about this is that when the Bible was written, this was a letter written to a church, okay? So the apostle Paul wrote the book of Ephesians to the church at Ephesus. There wasn't chapter and verses. It was just a letter, okay? Later, as it was canonized, the Bible had chapters and verses, and it helps you and I to find things. It's very helpful. But when Paul wrote this, here's what I want you to understand. He spent the first part of this letter talking to you and I as an individual before he started looking at the roles. You see, in Ephesians chapter 5, we don't see the role of a wife until verse 21. And then in just a few verses, the husband and then the children. He spends 20 verses on you as an individual. So as we get started, I think it's really important that we see, well, what was he talking about? Because he knew something apparently we didn't know. So go to Ephesians chapter five, verse one. It says this, imitate God. Say imitate God. This is a big, these are big shoes to fill. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do. That alone is great advice. Imitate God in everything you do. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. What did Christ do? We know what Christ did. He literally laid down his life for us. What does that tell us? Number one, that, that God is a God of love. It's who he is. The second thing that we see is he said that we should be like Christ, which was what? selfless. Probably the number one reason that divorce takes place is because of the opposite of that, which is selfishness. We're going to be talking about that over the coming weeks, but we're called to be selfless individuals. Verse three, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, or coarse jokes, that's like dirty jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of God. Will you take it for a second? Never mind, give it back. <laughs> you guys can pray for me. I'll just be transparent, okay? For months when I get up to preach, <clears throat> I can't make it through 10 minutes without having a coughing spell and I don't have any allergies and I'm not sick. I think it's just like literally an attack on me, but you can just say a prayer. Verse 15, Lord, jump on down. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunities in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly. That would help a lot of marriages. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. What the Lord wants who to do? Not your spouse. What the Lord wants you to do. Verse 18, don't be drunk with wine. That will ruin your life. I love Paul's writing. 
But instead, here's what he tells us to do. Be filled with the Spirit. He goes on to say that our life should be a life full of worship, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. God, his design, guys, is that we would be full of the Holy Spirit. When you accept Jesus into your heart and the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you, there is a transformation that takes place. Only when that transformation takes place and we allow the Holy Spirit to produce the fruit of the Spirit, we talked about last week, which is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When the Holy Spirit is controlling us, when we walk in the Spirit, we won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Paul was saying, you as an individual have to first be full of the Spirit of God, or you can't even perform the roles as a husband or a wife or a child. Okay, so let's talk for a second about what what God really wants to do in you specifically. Because who are we talking about today? Are we talking about your spouse? Are we talking about you? You. I'm talking about me. You're talking about you. A dream marriage, the way that God intended our marriage to be, it has to start with us. And it always involves two people who are continually pressing towards the goal of growing in their relationship with God. That's what it has to be. I love what Romans says, Paul in his letter to the Romans. He says this in chapter 12, verse two. He says, look, don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world right? Don't, in other words, uh, in, in this context, don't look at marriage the way the world looks at marriage. Don't, don't, don't take on the same philosophy of marriage as the world does, but do this instead. Let God, let him transform you. Transform who? You. Let God transform who? You. You. God wants to transform you. He wants to transform me into a new person by what? By changing the way we what? Think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Listen, if you're young and you're not married yet, you need to learn how to think. You need to allow God to transform you now, not after you're married. Before you ever tie the knot, before you ever stand at the altar and enter that covenant with God and say, I do, you need to let God transform you and change the way you think. Because when God changes the way you think, then you're going to understand God's will because you're going to see things the way God sees them. I'm just telling you right now, this is a reality why so many people, they really just marry the wrong person because they don't know the will of God, because they haven't learned how to think, because they haven't allowed the power of the Holy Spirit through his word to transform them so that they can see things differently, so they can see marriage differently. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, think about this. Look, look at the world. The world says, this is how the world views marriage. This is, this is how the world thinks, is just swipe right. Right? You can, you can just hook up, no strings attached. In fact, don't even get married right? Just enjoy the gifts and the fruit of marriage outside of the covenant of marriage, right? Or maybe try before you buy, right? Let's move in together and let's just try this out and see if we're compatible. That is the dumbest thing you can possibly do. That is so far outside of God's design and plan for marriage. All you're asking for is complete destruction in your walk with God and your relationship. It's not the will of God and it is sin to live with someone you're not married to and to sleep with them. Now, I know you're not used to hearing this kind of preaching because a lot of pastors just, they tiptoe around stuff that's touchy like this. But guess what? We love you. And we're just going to tell you how it is because we want you to enjoy all the wonderful things that God has for you. Let me just stop right here too. Over the years, so many young people have come to us, and this is really heartbreaking, and our student pastors can attest to this. But many times, a student will come to us and say, um... I'm having suicidal thoughts or a parent will reach out to us and say, you know, uh, to our youth pastors or to Misty and I, hey, is there any way, you know, that we can get my, my uh, teenager into counseling because they're having suicidal thoughts only to find out that they just broke up. 
And then when we asked, the, and then we asked this question. So you just broke up, huh? Were you having sex? And they were like, yes. How'd you know? Because that's what happens. When you don't do it God's way, it destroys both of you from the inside out. That's exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to try before you buy. He wants you to have sex. He wants you to move in together. He wants you to enjoy all the gifts and the fruit of marriage outside of the covenant because Satan hates covenant with God. He hates every beautiful thing that God created. And he wants you to enjoy those things outside of covenant with him because he hates God and he hates you. And, and, I, and I know you know I'm telling the truth right now because there's so many of us in this room you tried before you bought, right? You tried it, and guess what? It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't work. How do we know? You can just look at statistics. Don't even look at the Word of God. Look at statistics. 76% of couples today cohabitate before getting married. I'm not done. 80% of those end in divorce. 80%. You want to know why? It doesn't work. It's not God's way. It's not God's dream. It's not God's vision. Now, I'm not here to condemn you. If you're living together, here's what you do. You move out. You separate. And you regroup. And you go back to Romans 12, and you allow God to transform you into a new person. Let him change the way you think. Understand the will of God so you can see things the way God sees them. And then one of two things is going to happen you're going to recognize that person is not the person for you. You're welcome. Or secondly, you'll realize, okay, no, like this can work, but we need to be holy and we need to be separate from sin and we need to be righteous and we need to do this right. And so we're going to date while we live in two separate places and we're going to be pure and holy before God. Yeah. And then when the timing is right, we're going to tie the knot and we're going to get married and we're going to do this right. And then God's going to bless it. That's right. And then you're going to have an incredible marriage. You know, we talk often about how <laughs> sin separates us from God. The thing about it is, is when you are in a sin cycle, whether it's sexual immorality or any other sin cycle, you're going to have a real hard time hearing from God. Not that God can't like knock you upside the head with a two before because he can. But the fact is... In order to hear from God, that sin cycle, you got to realize like, okay, if I'm living with someone I'm not married to, but I really think, I, I really think I love them. Listen, the world doesn't understand what love is. The world doesn't understand what love truly is. What the world understands is what lust is. The world has mixed up the fact that you have a sexual attraction for someone, that that is love. That's not love. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, what love is. Listen to what love is. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable. Oh my gosh. If you're married you right now, <laughs> holy cow. How many times have we just been irritable, right? That's not love. It doesn't keep a record of being wrong. You mean you don't keep that list and every time you get in a fight, bring it back and remind them of what they did the time before? That's not love. This is getting too real. It does not <laughs> rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It doesn't throw in the towel. The world says, you know what? You'll fall out of love and you know what? Just start over. No, yeah, no, no, no. Just no. get a divorce. Love doesn't give up. Love never ha loses faith. It always is hopeful. It endures through every situation. Listen to me. What the world wants us to believe is that love is just this attractional thing. Listen to me. Yes, you should be attracted to the person that you are going to marry and you should stay attracted to them. That's why we should take care of ourselves. We'll talk about that throughout this series. But listen to me. Love is what we just read about right here. And love is first a choice, not a feeling. Love is a choice, not a feeling. Every day I wake up, I don't feel like worshiping God, but I do because it's a choice. And when we choose to love, the feelings will follow. Do you hear me? When you choose to love, the feelings will follow. But we start here first. So here's what you need to do today. If you want to have the dream life, if you're single, start working on your character right now. 
Align your character with the passage we read in Ephesians chapter five and ask yourself, do I have the character of Jesus Christ? Because I don't have any business being someone's wife or no someone's business husband. Being married until if you do. I don't have the character of Jesus Christ. All right. Because let me just tell you, marriage is hard. When really you bring hard. two people together, it's hard, but it is so worth it. If you're willing to be selfless. It is so beautiful if you're willing to set aside your selfishness and work together to build the dream that God brings you together. Because what he does is he complements one another when you are in the will of God. The second thing that you've got to do is you need to begin to look at your own character and say, I want to produce the character I want to see in my spouse. If you're married right now and in your mind, you know all those things you want to change about the other. Here's what I want you to do before you leave this service today is I want you to say, God, what do you want to change in me? And there's not one person in this room that should walk out of this room without answering that question. Because if you're not answering that question, what you're saying is you're perfect. And there's not one of us in this place that is perfect. So today I want to challenge you to say, God, it starts with me. I want to live the dream. You know, no one gets married and plans their divorce lawyer at the same time. They don't do that because we don't expect to get divorced. And yet one out of every two marriages are ending in divorce and eight out of 10 who are cohabitating are ending in divorce. Does that mean there's no hope? No. Thank God there's grace and there's forgiveness and you can start over and God can remodel your life and your marriage. But the fact is today you need to begin to ask God, God, show me what I need to work on in my own character to be the person that you want me to be to live out this dream. Will you bow your heads with us? So Father, we just come before you today. God, each and every one of us and we just say search our hearts. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, just begin to bring to the surface the, the, the parts of our lives, God, that displease you. Whether we're married or single, it really doesn't matter, God. We need to survey our lives. We need to recognize the parts of our lives that are falling short. And we just pray, God, that you would begin to reveal what that is in us and that, that we would have the, the willingness, God, to say, God, I'm, I, I want to work on that with you. Let's work that out together through your word and through prayer and dedication. God, let's, let's begin to work on me. I pray that every blind spot is revealed, God, that, that, that every, everything that is hidden from us about ourselves that we don't see by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that you would show each of us what those blind spots are when it comes to relationships. And I pray, God, that we would begin to work on those things. God, I pray over every marriage right now, God, that is struggling, I pray in the powerful name of Jesus for reconciliation and hope. I pray for restoration, God. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just step in the middle of that marriage right now, God, and bring these two together, God, and just let them both be selfless and holy and, and want to please you in everything that they say and do and think as they serve one another as you restore their marriage. And I pray for every person who is single that one day hopes to be married, God. I, I just pray that you would help that person to be content right now, that they would just do some inward reflection and just see themselves the way you see them, God, and that they would work on them, that they would look inside and be transformed by the renewing of their mind, and that you'd show them what your will is and show them who they are in you. I pray, God, that you'd keep every single person in this church pure and holy until the day, God, that, that you have set aside for them to be joined in marriage with that person that you have selected for them, God. Thank you, God, today for your word. Thank you for this message. We all needed it. 
And there's those of us in this room, God, who, who don't, we're so far from understanding all of this because we haven't even made, we haven't even stepped out to, to ask you to fill our heart and our life. And to that person, I would say right now, whether you're watching online or you're in this room, I would say, just surrender right now. Just say, God, I'm a sinner and I need you to forgive me of my sins. And just believe that Jesus is who he says he is. He's the son of God. And invite him into your heart and your life will never be the same again as you begin living according to the word of God. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, I just wanna ask you right now, if that's you, if you're watching online or if you're in this room right now, I just wanna ask you right now, do you know Jesus as your personal savior? We're gonna pray a prayer right now, a salvation prayer as a family, as a church. And I just wanna know who we're praying with. So if that's you, would you just raise your hand? If you're in this room right now, you say, I wanna know Jesus. I wanna make heaven my home. Would you just raise your hand right now? And if you're watching online, I, I, want, I want you to comment all in in the comment section below. Can you do that? So we're gonna pray this prayer together. Let's pray this prayer. Just repeat this after me. Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe with all my heart, Jesus is the son of God. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. Fill my heart, fill my life. Change me in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen, amen. If you made that decision today, you have made the best decision you will ever make in your entire life. And here's what we want you to do. We want you to text life change to 844-MMC-NEXT. And we have a very special message for you as you begin taking those steps in your walk with God.